Welcome back. Today I will not be working on the car because of this lovely weather, but today I will be working on a project that I've been planning for a couple couple months now. It's really been planning. Um, but essentially from the refrigerator air conditioning project, I ended up with a couple mini fridges that I had nothing to do with, and I realized that you can turn these bad boys into air compressors. So, I have two here, and this one, thankfully, is running, but originally I was going to use this one. And this one originally was working, and then it wasn't working, and I had all these doohickeys plugged into it, and for some reason it just wasn't starting up. It would start buzzing, I could feel it vibrating, but then it wouldn't start up. So I just kind of used it as a way to figure out what I was going to do with it on top of the air compressor instead of actually using this. Or not the air compressor, but the air tank. So, I will be using this one right here. Now, through trying to figure out why this compressor wasn't starting, I had it directly wired into the compressor itself. So I thought maybe the thermostat would be some sort of uh, resistor, a, a, a potentiometer of sorts, because there's a lovely schematic on the back of the fridge. I will include a picture here. Um, and it looks like a switch. It's a switch. Its symbol is a switch, but I thought potentially this was a potentiometer. So then, warily, I wired the mains voltage into the compressor itself, and it is running. It is nice and warm. It's very cold today, so I'm warming my, my hands on this. So. But what I will be doing next is I will be, of course, unplugging everything so I don't electrocute myself. And then I will be cutting the pump out and then see if it runs. And if it doesn't run, then I'm like, oh, what did I do? But right now, in its current state of being directly wired into the pump itself, it's running. So, fingers crossed, cross all the fingers, even the toes, and we'll get to work. I'm going to cut out the compressor. Now, I'm using this handy little little hacksaw, cut it out, but I will use a little forewarning here, there is that mean old refrigeration fluid gas oil stuff in here, that Freon, that stuff that burns through the ozone. So just be careful when you cut into this not to take any deep breaths unless you want to take a, a quick step into the grave. Okay, now I pull it out. Okay, I'm going to wire it up now and see if she's still be purring. I have it wired up to the mains, standard plug here. Now the only variable that has changed from when it was running here to being here is I just cut it off. It's the only thing that's changed. So if it doesn't work, I know I must have rustled it a little too hard when I have removed it, but we are going to turn it on now. Mm. It's running. And very well, might I add. So, I've already 
emptied out the best that I can the oil that was already in here and it equaled to about 60 milliliters of fluid so I'm going to replace 60 millimeters fluid through this here syringe. If it won't decide to puke it all up. So this compressor oil I got from Harbor Freight. It was very cheap. I think it was about seven bucks. I will actually include a parts list of where I got all the pieces to this puzzle. Right. Now what we're gonna do gonna burp the baby. I ended up cutting the base off of this fridge to mount the compressor to, like so. And that way I have something to mount to when I attach it to the, uh, the air tank. So that's going to be my next step, is figuring out where I'm going to put this on the air tank and figure out how I'm going to pipe this when it's on there. So, we'll get to that. So, it's pretty sturdy. With the air compressor, I am going to use this 11 gallon portable air tank that I got from Harbor Freight. Used a coupon because there's always a coupon, and uh, got it for a pretty good price. The fittings that I'm planning on using, I replaced the pressure gauge, and I placed it on this gun here so I can at least, when test pressuring, I can check to see what pressure it is. But there's a one eighth NPT fitting for the pressure gauge that I have an adapter up to a one fourth NPT female, so it's a male to female, and then I have this adapter here placed on top of it that I'll feed the copper into, and then here I will have the air out where this was normally where the air hose would just go into. That's where the air hose came from. So I was really overthinking it. I was thinking about using copper line and, and using these, these collars and it just ended up being too complicated. It wasn't working like I wanted it to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bit here and I'm going to extend it from there and then just enough to bend it that, what, 30 degrees down? Even less than that, 20 degrees? But anyway, this is going to go up and down like so. The filter this is going to go just below it, and I'm going to have it this way, and then feed the copper to here, and then this is where the pressure switch is going to be. When you're putting the Teflon tape on any threads, what you want to do is if it's screwing in this way, you know, righty tidy, lefty loosey, you know, the, the whole deal. What's important is, is you're also applying the tape on this way as well. So I'll show you, go this way, and with the Teflon tape, eh, go big or go home, because you want this to be sealed. So the direction I'm going, when I finish the tape, I'll pull it there. 
and that way, when I start to thread on this way, it's not undoing the tape. So if I were to go the other way and started twisting on this way, it would start unraveling the tape through the threads, and you just wouldn't have a good seal. But since it went this way with the tape, threading on this way, it's going to only further press that into the threads and give a good seal. And when working with brass, you want to be careful with how tight you go because it is a softer material. There is a, a potential of actually stripping the threads out. So I'd say that's pretty good. So this is going to come up like this. And then I'll have the T at the bottom. And then we'll work this copper to meet up with that T. So I think I will do the copper next. I'm working, kind of meeting halfway, which I think that halfway point will actually be the T. So, off camera, I soldered these as well as this one here, and I gotta say, it is airtight. I, uh, I left it plugged in and accidentally pumped it up to 140 psi, and <laughs> not gonna do that again, but nothing exploded, thankfully, but everything's pretty much spec and span. This right here, I soldered in uh, a scrap garbage piece of copper and pretty much just use it as a plug but this is going to be where the pressure switch is going to go which happened to show up today off 120 psi on 90 psi all right being the numbskull that I am, the big old nincompoop. I had somewhat of just like a passing thought of maybe it's an AC switch and I don't have to use a relay. Well, lo and behold, uh, after burning out that because I somehow wired it wrong and but essentially this is just it's an AC switch. So I ran the circuit through that I used from the other refrigerator pump, I use the wiring to just kind of have that same gauge. This is not correct coloring, so if you're an electrician and you're having a little bit of a nightmare right now because I attached the white to the black and it works. It's running. So what I'm going to do now is going to set up a time lapse to see how long it takes to pump it up to 120 and then we'll see if it turns off. very happy with how it turned out. I, I still have a lot more that I plan to do a little adjustments here and there with uh, um, with uh, 3D printing boxes for the wiring uh, as well as putting switches on and and also 3D printing some little some tool hooks so I can have all my little pneumatic tools on the compressor itself so when I haul it around and need to fill up the tire then I can definitely do that and the other nice thing is, is it's it's not too heavy. I can pick it up and I would say it's probably about maybe 40 pounds. So definitely more more portable than your run-of-the-mill air compressor of equal size, I would say. 
Now the inflation time to pump it up from zero to 120 when the cutoff point for the pressure switch is, it's about 50 minutes. So it takes kind of a long time, but when you're just using it periodically, I wouldn't recommend it for any nail guns, any air wrenches. It's definitely good for tire inflating, as well as just kind of putting the blow gun on there and just using it as a as as a blower, leaf blower, or just blowing some gunk away, or cleaning yourself off after a nice rusty day of rust reduction and rust removal. And I also custom made an air intake to use blue shot towels as an air filter. And we'll see how much gunk builds up on them, but as far as I can tell, there's some quality quality towels and I've heard some things about how they filter air and, and keep the germs out and all such things but we'll see see how it happens in the long run and how long it lasts for but I use wheels off the of skateboard I had on for the base of the air tank and it, it moves it around quite well I would have better liked it if I had placed them lower because the back end kind of drags a little bit but other than that, I think I think the skateboard wheels were definitely a, a good choice for mobility's sake. But if you have any ideas on how to improve this, make it better, or any suggestions, like so, leave them in the comment section below, and I will see you next time for another amazing, crazy car video or invention video. Stay rusty.